Good afternoon, everybody. This is Matt, a.k.a. The Lumberjack Landlord. I got to tell you, this topic, um, if you're on the, uh, the group chat that we have over there on, in, the, in, the, in the Facebook group, yeah, I just, Dion had to remind me to be nice in my response. I just, <laughs> I, he's like, Matt, weigh in on this, dot, 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 be nice. So in the interest of furthering people's education, I think that that, that point was really important. So he, we're here with Mike Zuber for One Rental at a Time mm -hmm. for segment number three. And so Mike, kind of basically the, the, the comment was, you know, Dion, you're a nice guy. You put a lot of information out there. But the fact of the matter is, is that in 08, a lot of Dion's, literally thousands of people like Dion went bankrupt and lost everything. So again, um, I have the luxury of starting my journey before all of the nonsense happened. Yep. I also have documented track record of getting out of the way in time because I saw it coming. I didn't see how bad it was going to be, but I saw it coming. So uh, I, I'm better than most. And oh, by the way, 20 years, blah, blah, blah. Right. Sure. So what I don't, here's the deal. In real estate investing, there are kind of like five proven ways to go broke. Mm -hmm. Dion is doing none of the five. Correct. If you do one of the five, you probably go broke. You do two of the five, you're going broke. And if you do three of the five, you're really going to go broke. So let me see if I can remember these. Actually, I wrote, I wrote them down. Let's see if yes. I have. Oh, I have them. Yes. I wrote them down. Perfect. So here's number one. Mm -hmm. If you are buying things and overpaying day one, and more importantly, betting on appreciation to bail you out, you're eventually going to get got. Dion has never done that. Dion does his work. He knows what the average deal is. He only buys great deals. He is not doing that, nor has he ever done it. He will be fine. Yep. Number two, your debt structure. If your debt structure is so bad that you are forced to sell because you can't carry the debt, you're going to go bust. Mm -hmm. That is what happened last time. Dion is not doing that. That is what's going to happen to commercial real estate. Dion is not doing that. So Dion so far is 0 for 2. Mm -hmm. Number three, if you are adding leverage on leverage and creating alligators because you want to maximize your return in a rising market, you are going to get got because a flat market will destroy you. Dion is so anti-leverage, the guy would not listen to you and I and take 50% out of a free and clear property. Dion is clearly not over leveraging his stuff. He is now 0 for 3. Number four, he underestimates carrying costs. He underestimates hold time. He underestimates all these other factors where eventually he can't carry it any longer. Dion has an amazing set of reserves. He doesn't have any kind of costs that would eat him alive because he doesn't have short term debt. He, he doesn't care if is, he has so much reserves. He could have units literally vacant for a year or non-paying because of an eviction and be just fine. And he has a diverse tenant base, which means if there's one set of employers that go bust, he's the rest carry him. And the fifth one. So, so far, Dion's 0 for 4. In a good way. In a good way. <laughs> Number five, you don't appreciate that easy times end, right? Good times never last, bad times never last. Sure. Dion is remarkably conservative. He has been planning and preparing and dry powder and for a long time. In fact, he just wrote an offer on a fourplex at 1-1 that was listed at 1-3. Why? Because it is a great deal at 1-1. It is not a good deal at 1-3. Mm -hmm. So again, Dion has none of the five variables that lead to a bust. So the person is probably somebody who experienced either it personally or in his network and just wants to put bad vibes out there because everybody has to lose. Nobody could win. And dude, you suck. Just you suck. You, you suck. You, let's be happy for people that learn the lessons and don't repeat any of the five errors. And oh, by the way, there are people listening to this. You're doing some of those five. You're going to get caught. There will, real estate investing is an amazing vehicle where people go bankrupt all the time. Sure. There are ways to do it wrong. And I just gave you five. Dion is not doing any of the five. Uh, I would bet he has staying power for decades to come. If you oh, want to disagree, go ahead. I'm not. I think you'll be just fine. Hey, listen, I'm all for listening to somebody that's got an informed opinion, but more likely than not, this guy's a piker. 
He's a, <laughs> yeah. He's how many a, does he own? Right. Yeah. How many do you own? You're a nine to fiver and you're going to grind it out until you're 67. And that's okay. Like that's your choice, but we've all made the choice to have financial freedom. And the only way that you can do that is by under is taking on some level of risk yeah. because this isn't nerf life. No, no everyone's no. outcomes aren't guaranteed mm -hmm. and there has to be some risk and there also has to be further investment, not only of resources that come eventually, but most importantly, time in the beginning, mm -hmm. that investment of time that too many people don't make. So I have no problem listening to guys that are, you know, in the game and they've got eight or 10 units and they're like, I got my clock cleaned in 07. Mm -hmm. You know what, Mike? I think that if somebody said that to us, we could probably write exactly what happened to them. Yeah, because they we did not happen. I mean, one of, the, one of the most painful stories I have, because again, I was in this mix, right? Right. Um, there was a guy who was legit worth 10 million, like 10 million bucks. That's, that's 10 million bucks back when 10 million bucks was 10 million, 10 million bucks, bucks, right? Yeah, exactly. right? Pre, yeah, pre 40%. Yeah, yeah. yeah pre, pre 40%, whatever. Um, he lost it all. Why? So let me go back to the five. Let's, let's bring this back up. So he did four out of those five at least. So he, he, was, he was expecting appreciation to bail him out. Bad. He had short-term debt structures, sometimes six months, sometimes a year. Mm -hmm. He was, his number three was like his downfall because he had one asset go bad. It took everything else down. Mm -hmm. uh, he did number four. He under, the market changed and timelines got long. He didn't appreciate it. And he did all five. He was, he was five for five and as expected, went bust and went bust fast. And well, in spectacular fashion. If you're five for five, you're going bust fast. You're not just going bust, you're going bust fast. So I think that's what's really important is, and the reason why we do videos like this one specifically is don't listen to people that have done nothing before. Don't listen to them. It, all the life decisions that they've made have put them exactly in their life where they are right now today. Yeah, if you're watching a channel that says today is like 2008, you should delete that from your feed, unsubscribe. 100%. I'm not saying that real estate can't crash. I'm just saying it's not 2008. And anybody who thinks it is, is a moron. We're nowhere near that. Two and 28s were about 50% of the market. Yeah. And now they're less, they're just about 4% of the market. Well, two and 28s don't exist. Right. But something- Adjustable up. rate mortgages. Right. Yeah. But the, well, the adjustable rate, so the adjustable rate mortgages that they're coming out with now- Are very different. Yes. But still horrible because oh, it's still horrible. Get, yeah. Still bad. They're not, they're not, I don't know. It's I mean, the two and 28s were just some toxic garbage that only could blow up. Right. Arms are bad, don't recommend them, but they're not two and 28 bad. I mean, just, there are levels of stupidity. Yeah. Those those literally had a time bomb on them on every single one. It was a go-go gadget. Dude, I can't. I mean, there were some two and 28s that had point point nine percent interest for two years. Yes. That went to 9.9 for the yes. last 28. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And they no. were underwritten to the 0. 0.9, not, not the 9.9. Oh yeah, because that would make sense. Well, we're just counting uh, on the fact that we can refinance. And just refi years. out. Just refi out. Oh, oh. Yeah. Guys, this is a hard journey. This is not easy. But if you watch the right people doing the right things, watch them that weren't just really successful. Because, Mike, I got to be honest. There's, I think, a few too many people talking about how awesome they are at real estate and they got into it in the last three or four years. I got news yeah, for you. Uh, they uh, suck. They're not very good. Yeah, I look forward to the YouTube universe in about 18 months. You and me both. Because, because there are people that are working in it today that will get crushed in a flat market. Yes. A yes. flat market break. Yes. Yes. And uh, I look forward to that. Yeah, I just think that there's a lot of people out there that will convince you, see, I did it in this market. Hey, listen, if your company or your real estate grew 5,000% or 500% in the last two years, you've never seen a down market in your life and have no idea what to expect. I can promise you. There worse yet, worse yet you think yeah. you're a genius. Right. That's, That's exactly. the worst. Yeah, you exactly don't right. change. You don't realize that buyer fatigue and their 6% interest and all these, uh, that's the thing that kills you. That's right. Is you don't wake up one day and realize the market changed. You look at your checkbook and realize you have no more cash flow and you're going to go bankrupt. It's you better be well capitalized. 
you better, better have good cash flow, not this tight, squeaky stuff. You know, like a hundred bucks a month on a property. Yeah. That is not a good idea. Not a good idea. That is not a good idea. So as always, we deliver fantastic content for you guys. Mike, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, go to your Google search bar, put in one rental at a time. Should see a website, YouTube, Instagram, books, courses. Uh, and again, I go live Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. for 60 minutes. Bring any and all questions. We typically have over 100 people, so it's a good time. Come have, come have a party. It is. It's a good time. And we all know that a lot of the experts watch that too. I know I I'm think. on there. Dion's on there. Steve Dow's on there. I think Matt, Matt the Mortgage guy's a lot of times on there. So I, it's a lot I'm of fun. The, the, truly lucky. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a blast to be a part of. And not that Mike has to defer often or go, hmm, but... If he does, yeah, one have. of us, one of us is there to jump. Dude, in. I stay in my lane. That is why the expert series exists. Cause I can talk about this much, but I have friends that can talk about that much. So I stay in my lane. I don't want to get got in something I don't know. So it's a lot it's of fun. Awesome. It's, it's a lot of fun. So, so give us the thumbs up, subscribe and come check us out this weekend. I'm on 1130 AM Eastern time on Sundays, but we have a lot of stuff that we're going to cover over the weekend. I'm sure. And uh, guys, thanks so much for watching and look forward to seeing you there on the live streams. Mike, thanks a lot. Thank you, buddy.